I might upset some of you here, but rogues suck. They are one of the most popular classes in Baldur's Gate 3. In fact, they're probably one of the most popular classes in Dungeons & Dragons. And to be fair, every party should have at least one rogue. They are super handy with high decks for picking locks, and their sneak attacks allow for some devastating damage. But what happens when you have a whole party of rogues? I just finished a playthrough with the least popular class to clerics, proving that they are one of the strongest and most versatile class in Baldur's Gate 3. But now, I want to know, who is the weakest? Now my pick was either between the Ranger and the Rogue, and I have decided it is most likely going to be the Rogue, since they depend so heavily on hiding and having advantages when they start combat. So let's get this started by introducing you to my custom character for this run. I decided to randomly choose a race, and we got a human. So I present to you Don, a very sinister man with a very, very generic human name. For this run, Don is a lawful evil character who is a self-serving assassin. He enjoys the thrill of murder and sowing seeds of chaos. So you guessed it, evil dirge. This could be interesting. Strap yourself in, adventurers. Let's get this show on the road. So just like last time, the plan is to rush through to Withers and respec our team as quickly as possible. In the Nautiloid, we killed the Intellect of Our, teamed up with Lazel, rescued Shadowheart, and this time I didn't bother to try and steal the Devil Commander's sword, and we went straight to the Nautiloid's control to get us out of here. After landing, we recruited Shadowheart, and obviously Astarian, since, you know, he's the OG rogue. And this is also when I realized that I made Don look very much like a vampire, despite him not actually being one. I found the portal where Gale was stuck in the wall, and we gave in to the urge, and well, uh... I was pretty surprised by the outcome. Mistress Eyelid, stop! Cease, you lose! Ah, ah. I guess Gale won't be able to give us a hand during this the campaign. <laughs> anyway, we continued the rescue Lazel from the cage, and the tieflings made mention of someone seeing more gif indicating there was a crash nearby. We then made our way to the temple where Withers is. We fought the group outside and continued to wipe the group inside. After looting a little bit, we fought the skellies and released Withers from his slumber. Now that we had Withers, I quickly respect everyone to Rogue. As far as builds go, I aimed to have Astarian and Don dual wielding with a dagger and short sword, and initially I had Shatterheart and Lazel using a rapier and a shield. We long rested and Lazel implored us that we should find the Gith Kresh to have the tadpoles removed. This sounded like a solid plan. Now that we were all rested and ready to go, it was time to proceed on our adventure. We proceeded on where Aridan and his crew were trying to get into the groves. Shit! And so we helped them out. The fight was a pretty easy one. We started on top of this hill, and with the height advantage, along with hide, we had some pretty great crit shots on all the goblin raiders, and we managed to take them out pretty easily. After we defeated the goblins, we quickly looted them and went inside the goblin camp. We stood by and watched while Zevlor knocked Aridin's lights out. Zevlor then told us about Neddy being an option to heal us from the tadpole. After Zevlor left, we pickpocketed Aridin and looted everything he had on him. We continued down to the druids, where Korga was threatening to imprison Arabella. We had this urge to trick Arabella into thinking she could run, and well, uh, yeah, things didn't go too well for Arabella. Tila to me. Things are getting pretty wild. We continued inside and continued to speak with Nettie, and we did try our best to avoid talking about the tadpoles, but she managed to get it out of us. He offered to help us with a thorn, but we weren't really going to trust her to, you know, try and stab us with some thorn. She gave up and admitted that this thorn was going to poison us. She then offered us a vial of wyvern poison to kill ourselves with if we felt like we were going to turn, and urged us to promise we would do it. And we weren't really going to do that, so she attacked us. We dodged her initial lunge and combat started. So this was four against one, so our rogues were able to get some advantages on her without hiding, allowing us to use sneak attack on her and get some pretty easy crits. After she was dead, we looted everything. And we also made it to level three. This allowed us to choose our rogue subclass. I made Don and Lazel assassin subclasses, and this basically allows them to have advantages at the start of combat, and also if we surprise the enemy. I made us Darren a thief, which allows them to have a bonus action on each turn, and I made Shadowheart a trickster, which allows her access to spells, which can help us in the fights to come. Now, after we'd killed Nettie, I thought we may have been stuck inside of the room, as there was no obvious way out. And luckily, I found that the tiara was the key to allowing us exit. Thankfully, nobody noticed that Nettie was missing. I figured while we were here, we should do some snooping, and we found this suspiciously hidden chest. And inside the chest, we found a letter that was addressed to Korga, talking about a meeting place in the swamp. Hmm, very interesting. It was now time to head out. So we went up the hill and spoke to Alfira, but we didn't help her out. We found her a little bit sickening. Too sweet. Odiously sweet. The vomitous gall within churns. She sickens you. After this, we head down to the hill to confront the harpies, trying to beckon the child into the waters. 
Now Don fails his wisdom roll and we started combat lured. I was pretty cocky after doing so well against everyone we've fought so far, so I thought we would have no problems against the harpies. I was wrong. Very wrong. Everyone failed the wisdom roll and we were all lured at the start of the combat, allowing the harpies to lay into us. And that was pretty much our first turn wasted. Unfortunately, we only managed to kill one before they used lure on us again, leading us all to our death. I reloaded and tried again, and we were met with the same fate. Being lured constantly and then being killed off in one to two hits. After two more failed attempts, I had decided that I would give up for now and come back when we were stronger. The major issue here is that the rogues really need to have the advantage in the fight. And so it was going to be a hard push winning this fight with our party as it is. I also realized that perhaps Lazel and Shadow Hearts aren't so proficient with shields, so I got rid of them. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of running from a fight, but it's uh, better than bashing my head against a wall. We spoke to Zebler again, and we agreed to help kill the Goblin's leaders. Of course, for a price. Pay everything. You'll get your coin. It was now time for us to leave the group. We went into this cave and we stumbled upon some goblins. We got the advantage on them and wiped them out pretty quickly. We then looted what we could find and I thought it would be a good idea to jump across to this hill where the more treasure was. I jumped across realizing there was a trap still active. I thought I had disabled it, but apparently not. So I quickly rushed over to get the treasure. Unfortunately, I stupidly allowed everyone to follow me and so they all got posted by the trap. Literally everyone but Don died. And I couldn't afford to resurrect them as I had just bought everyone new equipment. Not good. I realized that there was another button to disable the traps and I had to waste three of our revival scrolls to bring them back. Not very cunning of me. We looted the remainder of the cave and left, tails between our legs. We long rested and pressed on, finding the cultists who had been attacked by the owlbear. We convinced them to attack the owlbear and we followed after them. We went into the cave and we tried to sneak in to get the advantage position. Unfortunately, we weren't stealthy enough, but we managed to convince the owlbear mother to let us go. As you retreat, the owlbear lets out a short huff. The message is clear. So we rushed to a high spot and started the fight, getting our advantage on it. Since we had the advantage, we reduced it to half its health before it even had its first turn. And without too much difficulty, we managed to kill the owlbear tech mother, taking no damage. Not bloody bad. We then decided to let the cub live. We may be murderous assassins, but we're not mindless savages. We found Scratch and invited him to our camp. We then continued to sneak into the back of the ruined town. We spoke to the group of goblins torturing the gnome on the windmill. What's it bloody look like? We're teaching this here pipsqueak to fly. Finding that they were going to attack us unless we paid them. Don convinced them to let us go. Good choice. Now clear off. Then I got everyone into a good position and attacked. Using mainly range attacks and good positioning, we managed to kill them pretty well. We then proceeded to release the brakes of the windmill, sending the gnome flying. We pressed through the goblin camp and went towards the swamp. We found Auntie Ethel and the two brothers confronting her. We decided to defend Ethel, and the brothers attacked us, forcing us to kill them. Oh well. Ethel then invited us to a tea house. We'll go check it out later. For now, we continued deeper into the swamp and made our way to the meeting place that was pointed out in a letter addressed to Korga. On the way though, we accidentally stood in a trap, which did quite a number on us, so we had the long rest. That night, Alfira came to the camp. Don almost sent her away, but she convinced Don not to let her stay. Of course, this was a big mistake by her. We woke in the night standing over her body, quite pleased with ourselves. We managed to hide the body, and everyone was none the wiser. In fact, it's almost as if she didn't even exist. The next day we exited the long rest, only to be seen immediately by the Mephits in the wood wards. Very bad planning on my part. This was painful. As we were caught off guard without having a chance to have an advantage, the wood wards being level 4 and the Mephits all summoning other Mephits, uh, we got squashed. So I decided we might come back after we have a couple more levels under our belt. We went back to the goblin camp and murdered every single goblin we could find. We then found this group of ogres and convinced them to side with us if we needed their help, provided we give them a good feast. A brilliant notion. Continuing on, we stumbled upon the ogre and bugbear, which weren't very happy about us finding them. Luckily, we had the advantage and killed the bugbear pretty quickly. Obviously, the ogre wasn't very happy about this. We then employed a new strategy for the ogre, running to the edge of the ogre's line of sight, using hide and range sneak attack to take her down. Of course, though, someone had to be the bait for her, but we managed to kill her. I will from now call this hide and seek method. We continued to cross the river and fought and killed the gnolls and hyenas. We went to the toll house where the followers of Tyr were held up. I tried to pickpocket the traitor, but we were caught, which left us in a pretty rough spot. And despite putting up a good fight, we got squished, yet again. We reloaded and spoke to them properly this time. The leader offered us his sword as a reward for killing the demon Karlak, so we agreed. 
So we quickly made a detour and killed Karlak. We went back up the top of the hill to claim our reward, Sword of Tear, which was completely useless to us. However, their leader was now unarmed. I got everyone in a good position, poised to strike, and tried to pickpocket the traitor again. Oh no, he isn't very good at pickpocketing, and he failed. However, this time we were much more prepared. Everyone had an advantage position and we managed to get some great crits on them. And because a paladin didn't have his sword, he was pretty much useless. We used our hide and sneak attacks to kill them all. Unfortunately, Don was the only one to level up, so we still had a little bit of work to do before everyone else was level 4. We got greeted that night by Skeletus Fell, who rewarded our efforts with a cape that turns the wearer invisible after each kill. Perfect for a rogue. Thank you, butler guy. We then proceeded to fight the Knolls who had the Zentrum trapped. We got the advantage on them, managing to kill a couple before the cutscene allowed Astarian to get them side with us. We then waited while the Knolls finished off the Zentrum inside, and then while we had the advantage, we attacked the Knolls, wiping out the Hyenas and weaker Knolls with fire arrows, leading us to use the hide and seek method on the big Knoll. We continued to the Burning Inn and saved Council Floric and Benrin. We then went to the entrance of the Zentrum hideout and saw this fire barrel. We weren't going to take any chances, so we blew up the area. Somehow, the guy inside survived though. We walked in and we managed to convince him not to blow us up and he uh, let us in. We entered the hideout and were confronted at the gate. With no invitation, they were a bit resistant to letting us in, so we took the rogue option and hid in the shadows. The Zentrum were taking no chances and armed the trap. We snuck all the way down and around and assassinated their leader. We then found that everyone else was lying in wait for us, so we snuck around the side found this explosive barrel underneath this bridge here and blew it up, causing the platform to fall down doing some good initial damage. I was a little bit concerned because there was quite a lot of enemies here, but, but somehow we managed to beat them making great use of our hide and ranged sneak attacks, and also a few elemental arrows to do some damage to groups of them. We eventually worked them down and then looted all there was here. We released the painter from his slavery and were promised a big reward once we find him in Boulder's Gate. We went back to the grove to sell some stuff and we were all level 4 now so it was time to have another crack at the harpies. On our way there Raphael approached us. We weren't opposed to dealing with him so we said that we'll call you if we need you. Because my compassion is boundless. This time I wanted to make sure we had every opportunity to kill these annoying bloody harpies. I had everyone start in high places overseeing the area while Don started in dialogue. After pickpocketing the kid we started the fight. Although the luring song was annoying Having everyone spread out had its advantage. We got some great critical hits on them. This time we also didn't miss as often, which meant that we were able to prevent them from singing their song quite as frequently, which honestly helped save our team a lot. Within two turns, we had killed the harpies and we got our sweet, sweet revenge. We looted what we could and went back to the swamp. With a bit more confidence and a better stealth strategy, we fought the mud methods and the wood wards. We started with the advantage taking out two straight away and used their line of sight to our advantage. We used the hide and seek method to take them out quite easily this time. We found this letter which showed that Korga was corrupt and had bad intentions for the grove. How could we use this for our advantage? We went straight back to the grove and, and confronted Korga to stir up some trouble. When we did, some shadow druids appeared, threatening everyone. I tried to stay out of it in an attempt to clean up the remains, however I couldn't, and we convinced Korga to betray the Shadow Druids and side with the Grove. Not really an ideal outcome, but anyway. We attacked and killed the Shadow Druids. Korga had now seen the light and called off the ritual, allowing the Tieflings to stay. Well, uh, our evil playthroughs not off to a great start. It was now time to head to the Goblin Camp. We waltzed in the door and used our illicit connection to gain access into the camp. When inside, something tried to overpower us, showing us visions of three leaders of the Absolute. However, the relic saved us. We continued inside and spoke to Minthara. She was also infected. And in her memories, we found that she knew something about the Absolute Leaders. So we agreed to help her take down the Grove. After all, it could be fun. We went back to the Grove and assassinated Zevil, thinking that this would help aid us in the fight to come. We and found that the Goblin Raiding Party was outside the gate. We went up to the top of the gate and found that Zevil had been replaced. But we had to betray this guy all the same. We massacred the Tieflings at the top of the wall and we allowed the Goblins in. We assisted them in wiping out the tieflings and then continued to fight the druids. We were faced with a tough fight. We only had a few goblins to help us and they died pretty easily, leaving us very alone. Everyone was about to be taken out, so it was time to call in reinforcements. The trolls were a huge help and helped us finish off the remaining druids. Though the trolls weren't very happy with the amount of food that was left behind. Though in order to prevent them from fighting us, Astarian allowed the leader to lick his foot. Thanks for taking one for the team, Astarian. Satisfied. The grove was slaughtered, and it was time to celebrate. The goblins and Minthara was in our camp. Minthara was thirsty. 
tonight. You are mine. And so was Shadowheart, apparently. She drank a lot. However, Don had his sights on a more powerful woman and decided to get frisky with Lazelle. If you've been enjoying this video so far, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, by me, subscribe to the channel. After a steamy session with Lazelle, the night was cut short as Minthara proved to be more evil than Don, or she was sad that Don rejected her and set the goblins on us. I was very worried as there was a lot of enemies, including a troll, and there wasn't very many opportunities for us to get out of this fight. But somehow we managed by the skin of our teeth to fight them all off, using yet again the hide and seek method. At this point we had no loyalty to the goblins, so it was now time for us to slaughter the goblin camp as well. Before we went back I paid Auntie Ethel a visit. We made quick work of the red caps outside and convinced the Gur hunter that we didn't know who Asterion was. Ethel said that she might be able to help us with a tap hole, provided we let her take an eye. She revealed herself to be a hag and plucked the eye straight from our head. She then replaced the damaged eyeball but couldn't remove the tap hole. Great. That was not good. I guess the eye is a little bit intimidating. We then went to camp and proceeded to slaughter every goblin we could find. When we went back to the main areas, we snuck around to the high grounds and rained arrows down upon them. They had no chance of surviving the slaughter and we continued inside. Unfortunately, we had to tackle the goblin priestess head on, but there is heaps of shadows inside the ruined temple, allowing us to take him out without too much trouble. We long rested and spoke to Volo, who said he might have a solution for the tab hole. However, we had already lost an eye and we couldn't lose another, so no invisible eye for Don. Volo then legged it, which meant that nobody else could have an eye. Well, that's annoying. It was now time to take on Draw Ragslin. We snuck into his area and climbed the ramparts. From here, we rained arrows down using sneak attacks. With this position, he and his followers stood no chance. We had the surprise attack, which allowed us to pretty much crit Jaw Ragslin down without him even having a chance to move. Poor guy. We looted everything, and it was now time to move on. I thought it would be best to clean up some other loose ends, so we confronted the giant spider in the well. We snuck in and killed the little spiders and these weird mutated ones. We then squished the little spider eggs to limit the reinforcements, and then started the fight with the big spider. Things were looking pretty good. We had done significant damage to her by burning the web pass she was standing on, dealing decent damage to her. However, things turned when she finally got in our face. She did significant damage to us and had wiped everyone leaving Lazelle on her own with half health. Luckily, we just managed to get a sneak attack on the spider and kill it, leaving Lazelle to revive the party and prove she truly is built different. We decided we're going to take the mountain path. We continued along and found this group of Gith and their red dragon. Lazelle managed to convince Voss not to kill us while also hiding the relic and we were pointed in the direction of the crash. We proceeded through the mountain path and found Lady Esther, who wanted us to steal a gith egg. Although Don found it tempting, our gith queen Lazelle was obviously not going to let this fly. Steal one of gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. But we decided the reward for stealing the egg was better taking from Esther's hand. We continued to walk up where the group of death shepherds were. This was a mistake. I guess I was feeling cocky after destroying the goblin camp so easy. But we had no chance here. The Death Shepherds both had a level on us, and there were so many ghouls. Not to mention, the Death Shepherds could simply revive each other and the ghouls to max health. We managed to kite the enemy around, but it was honestly going nowhere. We were just kiting them around indefinitely. And every time we managed to kill something, the Death Shepherds would simply revive them. So we died here. And I took this as a sign that we probably should do the Underdark first. We continued down the Saluna Temple into the Underdark. In the entrance of the Underdark, we looted what we could find, and I braced myself mentally for the fight to come. We walked through the field of statues and confronted the spectator. It was a difficult fight, and it was hard to have an advantage on this spectator. It also released the Drow, who were charmed and started attacking us. On top of this, the spectator could pretty much one-shot us with its multiple attacks. But we shoved all the Drow to stop the charm, and they helped us. And with some fantastic crits, we managed to take it out without too much difficulty. We continued on and almost got discovered by Bullet. However, we managed to escape this fight as I didn't really want to take on Bullet without an advantage. We snuck around and made our way to the Arcane Tower. We struggled at first with the cannons, but found that Shadowheart's Fog and Shocking Grasp was a perfect way to destroy them. Afterwards, we snuck around the back of the tower to find these flowers which negated magic. Might come in handy later, though I stored them. Unfortunately, that must have uh, wiped them from existence as I couldn't find them anywhere to power this lift. Luckily, I knew there was another tree, so we left for now. We continued on and found the Dwego who were hunting the gnome who had escaped them. So we agreed to help capture the gnome. Good. We went on to where the gnome was being protected by the Myconids. On the way, we found that the Myconids were very, very sexual. They're coming. You're coming. We approached their village and they were quite wary of us. 
I didn't really want to fight them though. We weren't going to win that fight against that many. Though we convinced them that we weren't there to kill them. And to be honest, it really sounds like they're having a good time in there. We agreed to help the Mikeans fight the Dwega since it's probably going to be their easier fight. Glad also offered to help us. We went back down the hill to the Dwega, snuck up on them and attacked. Because we had the advantage, we made very quick work of them. And with Glut's help tanking, we could use our ranged attacks from up high and get advantages on every attack. We killed the Dwega and decided not to attack the Mykonids and fight Glut. You know, pick your battles. We went back to the Mykonids and told them the Dwega was slain. We collected our reward and continued on. We went to the Susso tree and collected a flower to power the tower. Hmm, I don't know about that sentence. We took the flower back to the tower, oh my god, and powered the lift. We went up the lift and looted everything on the tower on the way up. At the very top, a robot confronted us, and he wasn't happy about our abrupt arrival, so he attacked us. We did not stand a chance. Not only was this guy bloody tough, he had an ability to surround himself with an AoE attack, which pretty much could kill us if we stayed too close. That, along with all the animated armor around us, we pretty much were screwed. I attempted this another two times before giving up. Surely there was another way we could do this. Determined to figure it out, I found a book which had some poetry which resembled what the robot was talking about. We went back to the top and answered the riddle correctly. We then received the spring, and to my utter disappointment, nothing else. With that waste of time behind us, we decided to sail across the lake. We convinced the Dwego that we were one of the absolute and continued to the cave-in. But before we did, we found these corpses which were about to be ditched, and happened to find an invisibility ring on one of them. At the cave-in, we found out that Nia was trapped inside, and that one of the gnomes had run away with some explosives. So we followed their path. When we found the gnome, Lazel turned invisible and snatched up the explosive barrel, which meant that she couldn't threaten us. Wait, what in the hells? Bugger it all. You moved them. She then left without giving us uh, any little explosive, so we were left with the, the big explosive barrel. We took it back to the cave-in, set it up, and blew it up, killing a couple of Dwegger on the process. Pretty satisfying. Nia left the cave, finally, and asked us to help kill the Dwegger, which was pretty much impossible for us. We had no way of getting advantage, and the sheer number of them meant we stood no chance, and we perished. I tried another couple of times with different interactions with Nia. However, basically every other time, Nia joined the Dwegger and wiped us out faster. So after a couple more failed attempts, I decided we're going to leave near there to suffocate. So I decided to waste some time, so we went and fought the Minotaur using hide and seek method, and we took him out pretty easily. We then made our way to the Grimforge to make some adamantium weapons. We took out the skeletons and had surprisingly very little problem with the lava methods. However, this was where our good times ran out. We had a very hard time fighting the Grim. For some reason, I struggled to get him to end his turn on the center, and he pretty much would one-shot two of my team members with his quake and direct attacks, preventing us from surviving, and we were defeated the first couple of times. But I wasn't going to give up. The next time, I did my best to space everyone out as much as I could and use Shadowheart's Mage Hand to operate the lever. I decided that someone needed to take the heat and lure it all the way to the edge and pretty much sacrifice themselves, so that its movement speed would allow it to stay in the middle. Eventually, by the skin of our teeth, we managed to slam it with the hammer a couple times. We got down to the last hit that it needed, but luckily it stayed in the middle, allowing the mage hand to pull the lever and slam it, destroying it. Thank god. So I thought I'd go back to the cave-in to see if Neo was still trapped, and he was, so we decided to go ahead to the mountain path. So we were all level 6 at this point, so it was time to fight the undead. Though it was hard, and it did require a few elemental arrows, we did manage to beat them by kiting them around along the path, using line of sight, get good crit damage, and focusing on the death shepherd first, they couldn't revive the others. It was now time to go to the crash in the temple. We crossed the ravine and explored the temple. We killed the kobolds, these rude eagles, and the cats. We then proceeded to the crash. We spoke to the healer, who said they could heal us from the parasite. We allowed Lazel to go first, but we quickly found that there was something not right about this. We found that the machine was trying to steal Lazel's memories and simply kill her, not cure her from the parasite. But we couldn't stop it. Luckily, the machine suddenly exploded thanks to the Guardian in our minds. I still wasn't happy about this and left to get her tools and locked us in the room. Lazel was sure she was a traitor and implored to speak with the Inquisitor. However, when we locked picked the door, the Gith in the next room attacked us. This was not very good. We were caught a bit off guard and unfortunately we failed. I tried again, trying to have the same outcome from the same dialogue. This time, however, I thought it would be best to wait and see what happens. So I got distracted talking to Lazel and well, apparently everyone used that time to ambush us. When we got out of dialogue, we were surrounded by a bunch of Gith. This time though, we did a bit better. On the first round, we managed to kill one of them, landing some pretty crazy crits. 
By the fourth round, Lazel had died along with Asterion, leaving Shadowheart and Dawn to somehow manage to kill the others. Dawn's invisible cape was a lifesaver here, allowing him to kill the remaining enemies and be invisible again. But I still had to use a potion of speed on him so he could revive someone and still get an attack off. Somehow we managed to defeat them by the skin of our teeth. Hopefully this doesn't happen again. We made our way to the Kithrak who wanted to know about the artifact. At first we refused to tell her anything. No? Then I will take it from your corpse. And she simply killed us. We tried again, this time showing her that we had it. She tried to take it from us, but the artifact refused, flying back to us. She then sent us to the Inquisitor, and things were not looking very good for us. At first we refused to give him the artifact, saying that we were infected. He simply just thought the best solution to this was attacking us and killing us. And there was no way we were going to survive this fight, so we got squished yet again. After reloading, I took a new approach, this time seeing what would happen if we played along. Suddenly Vlacketh appeared. Despite the fact that we were surrounded by lots of strong enemies, we refused to kneel to her. She offered us purity if we agreed to kill whoever was inside the prism. So we entered the prism and were forced to face the guardian alone. We spoke with her and she revealed that she was the only hope to our survival and the only hope to the Sword Coast. She even offered her own life to prove it. If this was not enough to convince you, what more is there to say? Killing her right now would be no fun, so we agreed to let her live. Once we left the prism, we were attacked by the Inquisitor and the Gith, and we realized that they were going to kill us no matter what we did inside the prism. There was no way we were going to survive this fight, so we did what rogues do best, turned invisible and ran. We legged it right out of there and passed the second wave of enemies we wouldn't stand a chance against. We then fast traveled the f out of there. When we did though, we were forced into a long rest where Lazel came to terms with what had happened. Then. Something strange happened. Boss the Gith who was riding the Red Dragon came to our camp. He told us that the prism holds the key to overthrow the fake Queen Blackith, and we must meet him in Boulder's Gate. He warned us that more Gith would be sent after us. I thought it might be best to check back and see if Nia was still trapped, which he was. And to be honest, I had no need to try and release him. I wasn't about to waste a massive barrel of gunpowder freeing him, only to be attacked by everyone here. So I thought it'd be best to leave him. We lined up at the gates of the Shadow Cursed Lands, ready to take our first steps into Act 2. And that, everybody, is the end of Act 1. Now, I'm pretty confident in my claim. Rogues are definitely one of the weakest classes on their own. Rogues need to be played so much differently to other classes. You've got to pay a lot of attention to lines of sights. Try not to get them into combat without an advantage and really pick your battles. If the party is outnumbered, you have to think of ways to either avoid a fight or fight dirty. Although it's been ruthlessly hard, I am enjoying the challenge of having to think of other ways around situations by using the strengths the rogues have to their advantage and avoiding fighting where I can. Because you know what, that's what Baldur's Gate's all about. Overcoming challenges and enjoying, or suffering, with the outcome of your poor decisions. I hope you've enjoyed this run so far, and if you have, like this video. And if you're keen to see Act 2, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you there. Until next time.